What's going on guys, it's uh, Dare Meek here, and um, first off I'd like to just apologize to you guys for not um, releasing very many tutorials lately, um, I've just been really busy since I joined Dare, and um, just with a bunch of other things I've got going on, um, been too busy to do OCEs and tutorials and stuff like that, but I'm trying to get um, some more out here in the near future, so um, yeah, I'll uh, be teaching you guys today how to do an effect that I've got a lot of requests on. Um, because you've seen it, um, Ghostly was the first person I've seen do it, but um, I've used it in a few of my um, edits, and it's basically the screen kind of zooms in on the sides, and uh, you have a uh, gunshot sound and some twitch, and it just looks really nice, and um, I'll show you guys an example right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be teaching you how to do today. So, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, obviously, get your clip and After Effects, drop it into a new composition, all that good stuff. And um, this effect is actually really simple. How I usually do it is I just get the clip to where I want the uh, the effect to start, which I guess I'll do it like right here. I mean, you want to do it, you know, a decent amount. I, I usually do about the the length of the gunshot because how you get the sound. Um, of like the swooshing sound is just a reverse gunshot is all it is so uh, I usually do it about the length that it would take for that gunshot to, to uh, finish but yeah so I'm just gonna do it right here for this example um, what you're gonna want to do is look up um, it already comes with After Effects it's called Optics Compensation drop that onto your clip um, you're gonna want to check this box it says Reverse Lens Distortion um, and then you're gonna keyframe the field of view so you're going to keyframe it from zero until where you want it to finish, which should be the frame right before the shot is fired. So find where the shot starts, go to the frame before it, and you're going to bring it up to, um, I usually do 150. I think that that's a good amount. Um, again, it's preference, so if you want to do something different, then uh, do something different. But um, split your layer. Um, right where you want the shot to start that way you can uh, delete the optics compensation on this or at least that's what I do alright so as you can see the side of the screen zooms in and then the shot is fired and you can just leave it like that I mean that won't look too bad but um, I'll show you generally how I do it um, with the twitch and the exposure and I think it makes it look a lot nicer so uh, grab twitch drag that under your clip as well and what I usually do is just enable the uh, slide and that's it. Um, I usually bring the speed up to 25 and then keyframe the amount. So obviously you're going to want to have it be at zero until you want the effect to start. And then, oops, hold on, actually have it zero when you want the effect to start. I'm dumb. Then you're gonna want to keyframe it up until the end of the clip, or the end of the uh, effect. All right, and then what I usually do with the twitch is I'll have it go up to about I'd say probably let's see if five is a good amount. Yeah, five would be good. All right. And what I do is go into the operator controls for the slide, and uh, just leave. Th I usually just leave it the same. You can tweak it however you like. Um, doesn't really make that big of a difference because the amount is still really small. But I usually leave it at 50, and I usually just bring the RGB split up just a little bit. Maybe like, let's see, I bring it up to like 10. And that just gives it just a little bit of color um, in the twitch, which is, I think, looks nice. All right, so now you got the twitch, you got the optics compensation. So the last thing that um, I usually add is just exposure, and I usually just do a little bit of exposure, nothing, nothing drastic, um, but just keyframe the exposure from zero up until 
I usually do like one, or you could even do less than one. But um, that just makes it just get a little bit brighter as it goes on, and then right when it hits, it just snaps back into like that the regular color correction. I think it looks really nice. Um, so then after you get all that done, that's pretty much all you need for the transition. Um, I think it looks good. You don't have to, but to twixter the the shot after the transition. That way it's like, you know, it's all fast and badass and then all of a sudden it's Twixtered and super sexy looking. So if you don't know how to use Twixter, look up a transition on that. I'm not going to teach you how to do that right now, but change the frame rate to 59.94 and keyframe the speed. So uh, actually, I'm not going to keyframe it there. I'm going to keyframe it right here. Right now, about three. Make sure your frame blending is on so it's nice and sexy and smooth. Alright. Alright, and so that's all you need for that. And then all you gotta do is just add the sound effects. So, what you're gonna wanna do is just get um, a gunshot in there. Get a gunshot sound in there. And then obviously you're gonna want to line it up first of all with the actual shot. And then after that you're gonna duplicate the layer. And um, you're gonna go into the uh, or onto the second intervention shot and enable time remapping. And then all you're going to do is just switch these two keyframes. And that'll just make it so the shot plays backwards. I have a lot running on my computer and it's really slow, so I have like Dropbox and a bunch of other shit open, so it's running a little bit slow right now. But yeah. And that'll make it so it plays backwards, as you can see right here. And then. All you're going to want to do is just line that up with the transition and just have it end right before the second gunshot comes in. So right there is perfect. And then you're going to want to match up the, um, obviously you're going to want to match up the uh, waveform or you know, the sound with the length of the transition. So you can drag these keyframes out just a little bit more. That should probably be good. And then uh, let me double check. Yeah, and so then as it starts to zoom in, the gunshot will come in, get loud, and then go into the shot. So I will RAM preview this for you real quick. I'm not sure how fast my uh, shit's going to go, but yeah. But anyways, yeah, like I said, I'll be trying to get these uh, tutorials out a little more often. Um, this one's probably pretty lengthy, as it is. Yep, all my tutorials are long as fuck because I talk so much but yeah uh, leave a comment tell me what you want to see a tutorial tutorial on and um, I'll try to get it out for you guys um, I mean unless it's something insane that I can't do but um, yeah um, besides tutorials and OCEs I do have a couple other edits coming out in the near future um, that are kind of a surprise I've been working on them for a little bit um, if they come out the way that I hope they will then I'll I'll release them, but yeah. And this sh this effect too obviously looks a lot better um, when you're when there's a CC on it. I mean, obviously, like everything else does, but um, when there's a CC on it, it just looks super epic, and the RGB split and the um, exposure are more apparent. Side note: You guys should go subscribe to this kid that I'm using his clip. His name is Toddism. Well, his name isn't Todd Evans anymore. It's W.P. Todd. But, uh, yeah, he's a beast. So I'll leave his channel in the description for you guys. But, yeah, this is just about done. So, yeah, it'll look something like this. And then obviously, with the music and color correction, it'll look a lot better.
but oh, and it sounds ugly because I forgot to turn off the volume on it. All right, one more time. But yeah, so that's that. With music and with color correction, it looks sexy as fuck. So that's that. I'll end this before you guys get too bored, but that's generally how it is. I love you guys. Leave a comment, tell me what you want to see next, and peace.